Hey everyone, welcome to this bonus video log. It is April 3rd, 2014. This will probably be up right after uh, midnight on uh, April 4th. So anyway, today it is the 20th anniversary of one of my favorite video games of all time. So I wanted to kind of share a little bit of memories, look at the games themselves. Uh, and that is for the Squaresoft Masterpiece. And that's kind of a, a word that I don't like to use too much with video games. I find that there's very few games that meet that kind of caliber. It's just a, an overall work of art in the gaming world. Whether you like using the, the term work of art, it's of course up to you. Some people don't like saying, oh, it's art, it's a video game, not art, no way, whatever. But uh, this is one of those examples, I think, that transcends that. It's just the overall story, what they did with the technology they had at the time, and then combine that, of course, with one of the best video game soundtracks of all time, and what Nobu Uemetsu was able to do with the tools that he had. And, of course, I'm talking about Final Fantasy VI, known, of course, in North America as Final Fantasy VI. Three, of course, I have my copies right here. My copy of Final Fantasy VI, just uh, such an amazing game. I want to talk briefly about kind of my overall experiences with the game and everything with it. Uh, show you the back of my copy of the game. There we go. Um, and I'm actually going to open these up as we go and kind of just look at some of the material that these games originally came with. Um, my experience with RPGs in general goes like this. Of course, I played the original Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, uh, on the NES, but I had no idea what I was doing. I was really young at the time, and it wasn't until the Super Nintendo era that I gave some games a chance, and I ended up renting a copy of Breath of Fire 2. Like many gamers of that age, I would go to Blockbuster on, like, a Friday after school and get to rent a game for a weekend, you know, we end up returning it on Sunday and all that kind of stuff, and that's kind of, like, an experience that people nowadays and, and uh, kids nowadays and all that will not be able to experience. Yeah, there is game flying stuff, but it kind of is a different level of going to the game store, hoping a copy of a game you want it there and looking through everything. That's something that just doesn't exist nowadays. Um, but I picked Breath of Fire 2 off the shelf, and it, it is... My f probably my number one RPG on the SNES because it's the one I played first, and without it, I would have never loved RPGs. Uh, I had a few people I know, and kind of like I, I had a couple of like clubs I was involved in, some stuff like that. And uh, anyway, there were some kids that were talking about Final Fantasy, and I had n I had no idea what they were talking about. And they were talking about Final Fantasy VI at that time or three, and um, so. The second RPG I ever rented was Final Fantasy III, and I remember going to Blockbuster and picking it off the shelf and taking it home and playing it, and I didn't make it far. I would play for hours and hours, and I wasn't really... I mean, I just I remember getting the Figaro Castle for the first time, and that took me, like, a day to get that far into the game, because, uh, you know, trying to figure out everything, you know, making mistakes. Like I said, not experienced in an RPG whatsoever. Just exploring everything, just everything was just amazing to the eye. Uh, I instantly fell in love with uh, with the soundtrack. Uh, even at a young age, I've always loved video game music. I used to always record video game music onto cassette tapes so that I could listen to it later. Um, and just uh, it's just such amazing music that was involved in this game. And I I played through it as much and as long as I did. I kept making my my parents rent the game over and over and over again for me to uh, experience and you know, try to get farther. And I remember when I got to the uh, the world of ruin for the first time, doing the the, the continent. Uh, and just how epic. I thought that was the end of the game. I thought the continent was going to be the end of the game. We were going to stop Kefka at that point. Everything was going to be over with. And, and of course, no, that, that was just kind of, it's a little over halfway through the game because I think the world of ruins a little bit shorter than the world of balance, but it, um, it was just such an amazing thing, and losing Shadow, of course, I didn't know at the time that if you waited to the last second, so I'm like panicking, I'm like, what, what's going on, and then I end up jumping to the ship, and you end up losing Shadow, so he's lost forever, and, and it was just kind of like a sad moment there, and then before that, the scenes with General Leo uh, and everything, like, even as a side character, it was just such an amazing thing to, uh, to, to go through. And I mean, I played so, so long, I'm playing for hours and hours and hours, and uh, I got to the, like I said, I got to the World of Ruin, and I got a little bit into the World of Ruin, and finally I had to take the game back, and it was such a disappointment, um, because I really wanted to keep playing it, but at that point, I had just kept running it. So, when we took it back, 
I had kind of asked my parents, hey, is there any way, you know, can we ask the people at Blockbuster? And at this point, this was late in the NES. They were starting to sell SNES games away. Like, they were, it was starting, it was close to the PlayStation N64 era at this point when I finally got a chance to play Final Fantasy III. So I know really late to the party, um, but it didn't make any less of an impact at that point. Just showing you guys some of the uh, the insides here for Final Fantasy VI. Uh, and there we go. There's a copy of the actual card. Battery and all does work on this. And I've actually played through most of the game on uh, on this card in Japanese. Kind of fun to do so. Um, but uh, anyway, I uh, we, we went there and they were trying to get rid of some of the block games and all. And I'm, I'll never forget asking uh, the, the person working, the clerk, you know, I had no idea. Asking the clerk if we could buy the game, you know, how much it would cost. Can we just buy the, this copy of the game so I could continue uh, playing the game at that point? And uh, they were like, oh, let me check with the manager, blah, blah, blah. And then they went to the back and uh, came back and were like, no, um, they say there's too much activity on it. Uh, p- too many people are renting the game still. I'm like, well, I've been renting it for, like, I'm the one who's been renting it. I've been renting it for, like, two, three weeks now in a row. Just keep renting the same game every single time. It's not, you know, taking it back and just renewing it. And uh, it's just one of those things where it's just like, I'm, I'm the one doing it. So... Anyway, they wouldn't let me buy it, and it was just, I was so heartbroken, like, defeated at that point. Um, and eventually, I would get a copy of the game. It was actually probably over a year later. I would finally get a copy of my own uh, and play through it and be able to enjoy it uh, in its entirety uh, and finally did complete the game. Actually, right about the time I started Final Fantasy VII for the PC... Interestingly enough, because that's actually the first time I played Final Fantasy VII. I know, it's kind of the really oddball way to play, um, but I didn't have a PlayStation at launch. I had uh, I had the N64 near launch, and my friend had a PlayStation, so I would always go over there to his house. I remember playing the Final Fantasy VII demo and loving it, because I just, I've been working on six and playing through it. I was like, wow, this is just absolutely amazing. Um, but of course, I, I didn't get the PlayStation until a long time after. But uh, just just the overall memories of Final Fantasy three. I mean, I just picking out my friends that I had at the time and family members and naming them after the characters that were in the game and the characters have become just a part of everything and just I loving certain characters. Like Setzer is my favorite character from Final Fantasy six and actually maybe my favorite character overall from all the Final Fantasy with Locke being like number two or possibly at times could be number one depending upon story. I just I love both of their stories. Now, my map I have for Final Fantasy III is a little bit beat up. You can see there's a hole in it, unfortunately. Ah, it's just one of those things, but it, it's a darn near complete map. Uh, it only goes to the, far, uh, the, the, the part of the uh, World of Balance. World of Ruin uh, is in pretty much good shape, but cool that, you know, this was the map. This came with the game, so you could see all the locations, and I, I remember when I got my copy of the game, using this to help me out, and this isn't my original copy of the game. I wish I still had my original, but I, I used the map so, so much, it just, it fell apart, you know, it just, and also being a kid, you know, I, you didn't take care of things as much as you, I, I should have, and, you know, here, you've never, of course, seen a copy. Of course, you have a Final Fantasy three uh, for the system. Interesting, I also have a strategy guide, which is my friend Paul's, uh, his original guide for the game, that is, uh, it, the cover fell off, uh, and a friend of his, a friend of ours, uh, mother actually taped that cover back on to try to make it sh- see, like, you know, that he didn't take the cover off, um, but you, it's on backwards, it's up, upside down, I should have brought that out as well, but, uh. I also have other artwork, and uh, we have the entire musical score in piano form for the game. I have a, a decent amount of Final Fantasy three stuff, memorabilia, that I, I've been able to collect uh, over the years. Um, more so than Final F- than Breath of Fire 2. Uh, even, like I said, uh, there's just not as much to get for Breath of Fire 2. Um, I have played through every version that has been released, with the exception now of the iOS game, which I just I don't have any interest in. And I've talked about that before. You can uh, check out uh, if you search Final Fantasy VI or what do they do or, or something like that on my channel. Um, I'll try to li- I'll link it down below. Uh, I'll link it down below so you can check that out. Uh, basically, I just rant on the uh, that whole thing. Magic in the game, fire and offensive magic and defensive uh, recovery magic. Just a really well, this is like, this is why I used to love manuals. I mean, just looking through there, and there, there's a good shot of Locke and Terra's profiles with the character guides, with the great, amazing Amano artwork. 
uh, which I've always been a huge fan of. And I, I remember uh, when I was, for, you know, internet still pretty young at the time. There we go. There's Shadow and Celis. Uh, Paul's favorite character, by the way, is Celis. Uh, where is mine? Like I said, it's, it's Setzer. Uh, I also like Gal, uh, even though I don't use him a whole lot anymore. And I also am a big fan of Realm. I always had to finish my game with uh, with Realm in my party. Her sketch ability can glitch the crap out of your game if you're not careful. Um, but just so many memories. The opera scene, of course, is the most iconic of all time. I'll never forget just trying to save your Uncle Sid or whatever with Celis, uh with the fish. Uh, and just being heartbroken that I couldn't do it at the time. You know, kept failing, I kept reloading and trying and trying. Eventually, I was able to get it done, but I, like, I was determined. I had to do this. I was like, there has to be a way. There has to be a way to save them. And, uh, you know, it didn't really change a whole lot. It doesn't, but it was just some kind of a moral victory, uh, to be able to do that for the first time. All the fights with Kef- Kefka and Altros uh, and Chopin. Uh, I, I'm going to mess up with the names now on some of these bosses and stuff. I, I remember getting uh, to Gozo for the first time. I'm going to mess up that. Is it Zuzu? I can't remember the name of the town now. The big giant tower with the rain. I always mess up its name. You guys know it by heart. I'm an idiot for not doing any research prior to doing the video. I just turning the camera. Right? It's been a little bit since I played, and I need to play it through again. I said play it through. I'm not, I'm not doing this right now. I probably should. If I had really thought and planned ahead, I could have done some kind of bonus cool playthrough for Final Fantasy 3 or, or something. Uh, but it kind of like just came up and someone posted it on my wall today. Brian. Um, by the way, Kiriyama. He was the one who posted the article uh, with the celebration for the Final Fantasy uh, 3 uh, 20 year anniversary. So thank him for bringing this to my attention. So anyway, I had to do this uh, bonus video. Let me Trying to get the uh, the manual and all that. Oh, I can mess with this after I get off screen. Trying to get like the uh, the the map and everything else to kind of fit back in, so it's not sticking out at all. A little bit difficult, but anyway, guys, what are your favorite memories of Final Fantasy three six for those who played it? When was the first time you played? Did you play it as a kid when it was still like brand new? Did you play it in an emulator for the first time? Play it one of its re releases, PlayStation or GBA or hell. Anybody play the iOS version? You know, who's your favorite character? You know, comment down below. Let me know, what, you know, get a general poll of, of the Corn Shack Nation's favorite character uh, from Final Fantasy 3 slash 6. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, that will wrap up this little bonus video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, if you're new to the channel, of course, please look at some of the other videos, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Upload gameplay videos every single day, old school, new school Whatever you want to call it. Heck, I just got done Goat Simulator, for gosh sake. So, anyway, guys, like I said, thank you for watching. And, of course, I hope you enjoyed.